so my name is John, um, Cloud Alliance Architect from Checkpoint. So with me is Nathanel. Um, so this is our uh, agenda for today. So I'm going to first level set on the overview of Azure Virtual WAN so that we can all be on the same page for those who are not familiar with what VWAN is. So I'll spend a, a little time on giving you a, a quick overview. And then um, we'll go over some reference architectures and how to deploy Cloud Guard Network Security alongside inside the uh, VWAN. And then we're going to dive into a demo um, and then we'll be deploying the Cloud Guard into the VWAN. And then we'll show you how to redirect traffic, um, both for the private and the internet traffic to Cloud Guard. And then lastly, we're going to end the session with how to um, uh, do more with less and how to, how to automate and simplify network security with Cloud Guard. Okay, so jumping right into it. Okay, so what is Azure Virtual WAN? Azure Virtual WAN is a networking service that provides secure cloud transit and access to resources. So for the customers that are familiar, already familiar with uh, things like the uh, Azure VPN Gateway, um, the uh, point to site VPN Gateway, Express Route, um, uh, VNet peering, right? So what Microsoft has done is that they um, actually put all these services together into a, a centralized location to manage all the connectivity to make it easier for customers to connect all the uh, all the resources from from branch offices, uh, from uh, physical data centers, from headquarters data centers, right? Having Express Route directly into Azure, um, all terminating into the central hub. And this would include the VPN clients on the side, right? Uh, Microsoft calls it uh, point to site VPN. So customers will deploy the uh, the VPN uh, point to site VPN gateway and allow remote users to connect all the resources. So if you look at overall. Um, that what the VWAN hub is providing is a centralized location to connect all the various different resources into a centralized location and making it very easy to uh, manage all the connectivity uh, in and of Azure. Um, and uh, from our experience, right, uh, Azure Virtual WAN is getting a lot of traction in the field. Um, we have a lot of interest from our customers that are deploying uh, into the VWAN. So this is a great opportunity to learn how to secure the Azure Virtual WAN. Okay, so our how how we how so traditionally so before uh, during a couple few years ago when VWAN was first launched, um, Checkpoint was actually a launch partner for uh, Azure Virtual WAN. Our solution at the time we call it Harmony Connect is providing the uh, protecting the users from accessing the internet. Okay, um, and that solution is egress only. And a lot of our customers are asking us, hey, when are we going to have the ability to provide the east-west protection, uh, meaning protecting users from VNet to VNet connectivity and con uh, protecting the uh, branch office and, the, and also the data centers. So what we're introducing today is our ability to protect east-west traffic. So uh, VNet to VNet, VNet to branch, branched also uh, to other uh, hubs across the, um, the different regions or within the same region. We have the ability to provide east-west traffic control. So if you look at the diagram here, um, customers can have the data center uh, connect to the Azure to the VWAN via the express route. So that traffic uh, going into the VNet here will be protected by Cloud Guard Network Security along with branch-to-branch -branch traffic. So if customers who have uh, lots of branch offices, so um, I've uh, met a few customers have more than 50 branch offices that are connected to, already connected to VWAN, uh, we now have the ability to protect the traffic from branch-to-branch -branch as well. Um, and also along with the remote VPN users that are using the point-to-site VPN connecting into the VWAN, we now have the ability to protect the traffic uh, uh, from the users accessing the resources inside the uh, virtual WAN. Now, some of the benefit that having Cloud Guard Network Security inside the hub is that we'll reduce the networking uh, latency and we're reducing the networking uh, complexity. So what customers have used to deploy is a hub and spoke model where customers who have over 500 different uh, VNets that are connecting into the same single hub. So as you can imagine, every single VNet and every single branch offices or express route require a separate routing table so, you know, at the beginning, it's great when you have 10 or 50, 10 to 50, it is still manageable. But once you have more than that, it's become very complex. And when you start to have a DR site as a complete replica of what you have in production, um, the complexity of the networking is, um, is can get quite overwhelming and troubleshooting effort is, um, is quite difficult. 
So what we what we've done here, what Azure VWAN is providing, is the ability to consolidate all the networking into a centralized location, and placing Cloud Guard in the middle of it is a really good place to uh, protect the traffic um, across uh, uh, your entire Azure uh, installation here. So next, I want to go over some uh, reference architecture. So this is a uh, single hub design. So I'll start from left to right. On the left, we have our ingress cluster. So this is for uh, if you have any applications that you would like to publish to the internet, um, to your uh, customers right on the internet. So this is you publish it here. You will uh, actually configure your ingress connectivity here on the ingress cluster. Um, and this is actually our traditional HA and VMSS deployment. Um, so we have an ingress. This is for the ingress connection. And inside the hub, um, we have the various different, uh, we have the VNet 2, 3, and we have the branch offices and data centers that are also all connected into the hub. And its default gateway will be the, um, the internal load balancer here. So traffic, so now traffic coming from VNet 2 to VNet 3 will traverse to internal load balancer, and it will then uh, load balance the traffic between the two Cloud Guard gateways here in the middle. And then uh, after, after the traffic is, uh, after we verify the traffic is secure, then we allow the traffic from VNet 2 to VNet 3. Um, the same for data centers as well. So if you have multiple data centers that are terminating their connection into uh, VWAN, um, we have the ability to inspect traffic between the data centers, right? So let's say customers will have a, a data center one and data center two, traffic um, between the two data centers will actually get inspected by the Cloud Guard Network Security Gateways inside the hub. Um, and same for branch offices. So if you have multiple branch offices that are connected to VWAN currently, uh, terminating the connection to the uh, VPN gateway, um, we have the ability to inspect the traffic between branch one to branch two. Um, also with the VPN users as well, right? So we have an open VPN uh, with the uh, point to site VPN gateway, terminating the connection into um, the hub. We have the ability to inspect traffic uh, from and to the VPN users. So the good thing about this is that a lot of times, uh, you know, we have desktop support that can uh, connect to the remote users, right? So that traffic will be protected by help desk going into the, the, the VPN users and that traffic will, will, will work uh, bi-directionally. Um, so this is the single hub design um, and uh, customers can use the Cloud Guard Network Security Gateways for, for internet access. Um, and the all it will, uh, and also east-west connectivity. Okay, so this is single hub design. Next, I'll move on to uh, SD-WAN design. So a lot of customers already deployed a solution uh, as part of SD-WAN already, already in the VWAN hub. And to integrate Cloud Guard Network Security on top of that, what customers can do is to deploy a second hub. So in the second hub is a, is a replication of the single hub design, but, but but with a two-hub design within the same region, traffic will automatically flow between the two um, between the two hubs. So, meaning traffic from branch one, two, three, and et cetera that are connected to the SD-WAN appliances, um, traffic going into hub two will be inspected by checkpoint, um, and vice versa, right? So, if you have uh, connectivity that in from hub two, right, with the Cloud Guard Network Security deployed, you need to access the branch offices. Um, that traffic will be protected by checkpoint here. Um, that being said, now traffic from uh, branch one and branch two that are connected to the SD-WAN appliances will not traverse to hub two, so therefore will not be inspected by checkpoint. So um, you can design your uh, your uh, your you can you, you have to design your uh, connectivity. So what customers do in this in this particular case is they use the CPE's uh, customer premise equipment for uh, for the east-west traffic between the two branch offices here that connect to SD-WAN. Um, that would include the egress as well. So if you need access to the internet from branch uh, through the SD-WAN gateway to the internet, um, that will not traverse the Cloud Guard Network security here. Now, that being said, any traffic going across to Hub 2 will be protected by, uh, by Cloud Guard. Any questions? I'm gonna pause here for a second. Any questions from the audience? Um, you can also raise your hand too. Um, do you have any questions? Okay, so there's a question about what is the advantage of using Cloud Guard Network Security versus the Azure Firewall? 
So with Cloud Guard Network Security, I, I'm going to go to demo a little bit. Um, so with the Azure Firewall, the premium uh, Azure Firewall has the uh, firewall, URL filtering, intrusion prevention, and the SSL encryption. Um, we support, we also have those features with, with Cloud Guard, but we have more advanced threat prevention features such as um, anti-bot blade, which is um, control, which is uh, will help customers block the CNC. Uh, uh, command and control session if your workload has been compromised, for example, um, uh, VNet client three here that is compromised, we have the ability to stop the CNC communication to the uh, hacker on the outside, right? So that's one of the many features that we offer. Um, we also have, um, we, are, we are also a, a multi-cloud as well. So a lot of customers who are, um, who are in between uh, migration from the on-prem into the cloud, we have the ability to protect the on-prem and the cloud using a single management console. So we eliminate the, um, the redundancy of the um, making firewall rule changes, right, in the Azure firewall and also checkpoint. So you only put in the rule one time and, um, and it, it will be replicated across both the on-prem and the cloud as well. So um, we also support the, um, you know, all the major cloud providers like AWS, um, uh, GCP, and all the private cloud providers. We, our solution also work there as well. So you really get a single pane of glass, single, single, a single pane of glass uh, in terms of management. So all the changes is done once and, and it will easily replicate across all the, uh, all the firewalls in the state. Um, so, so I, I can uh, show you a little bit in a demo what the um, what what are some of the other features that um, that are available. Okay, any more questions? No. Okay. Excellent. Okay. So I'm gonna move on to our demo. So here is our um, is our lab, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and deploy. Show you what the deployment looks like um, in uh, in the Azure portal. How to deploy the Calgary Network Security. Okay. So I'm gonna drop out. Okay, so we are deploying the solution via the managed application. Um, the managed application look and feel is very similar. So I'm going to go ahead and go uh, very similar to what you're currently used to uh, deploying solutions. So we deploy solution from the uh, Azure marketplace. So first, I'm going to go ahead and create a resource group. Okay. And then I'm going to select the region. So this is the region. Um, you select the region where you deploy the uh, VWAN hub. So I'm going to go ahead and select. Central US. Right, give the managed application a name. My mistake. West Central. Okay, so it won't be able to detect my um, my hub because I don't have any hub. So I'm actually deploying my hub in West Central. So you select that. So this is important. You select so the right region where you have the um, your hub deployed. Go to next. Okay, so here. I'm going to go ahead and deploy my new gateways in Hub 2. You give it an NVA name. Cluster. Okay. And then here, um, so when you deployed VWAN, um, it will ask you how much traffic you'll be pushing through the, uh, the VWAN hub. So we are actually aligning to the exact, uh, to, to what, how v, VWAN is. Um, uh, with the scale units. So here you select the scale unit. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, select the scale unit two, which will give me 2.4 gigabits per second throughput uh, with the uh, full NGTP and NGTX um, uh, blaze enable, right? So these numbers are the um, advanced blade numbers. So if you're only running firewall, you're going to get a lot more throughput than this. So, so these number here are the are NGTP figures here. Uh, which means that you, you enable all the advanced threat prevention capability. Um, you will, you'll be able to push 2.4 gigabits per second. Here is the uh, BGP ASN. Um, so the VWAN hub is leveraging BGP to 
um, to help update and uh, the, all the routes, right? So whenever you have a new VNet that are added to the, the VWAN environment, um, the routes will get updated automatically and CloudGuard will be able to automatically um, uh, protect that traffic. So you specify your BGP ASN here. So typically I'll just leave this as default. And here I just select um, a uh, my SSH key to manage the gateways. Then go to next. Here, just uh, enter my secure internal communication. Okay. Go to next. Um, so here, if you need to tag the asset, you would put your uh, tag values here. Okay, validation pass. Three and create and off it goes. So this process takes about 15 minutes or so to deploy. So instead of waiting 15 minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and um, show you what the screen looks like when it's successfully deployed. I deployed uh, another cluster last night. Now <clears throat> with the managed applications, a couple of things I would like you guys to know is number one, um, we're gonna have a streamlined support. So when you, after you deploy the managed app from the marketplace, um, you're going to have streamlined support. That means that you can either call into Microsoft or Checkpoint. That is going to be your first and single point of contact. So if uh, you call into Checkpoint first and uh, we run the diagnostics on the gateway and we determine that it doesn't look like a, a Checkpoint issue, and what our support engineers will do is we'll actually call Microsoft and open a ticket on your behalf. And then we are going to um, uh, share all the ticket information with Microsoft. And then we'll, um, uh, if we need to, we'll actually, we will actually coordinate the troubleshooting effort. Um, so, so it's really, um, doesn't matter if you either you call into Microsoft or call into Checkpoint, that is, you're going to have a single point of contact. So our customers don't have to, um, you know, call multiple support and to, um, to, to resolve the issue. That's the first thing. Um, second thing is that we actually manage the uh, upgrade process for our customer. So whenever we have a new patch, we have a new version that we release, we give our customers a really simple way to upgrade um, their, their, their checkpoint installation. So um, customer has the option of upgrading manually, right? So that's uh, what uh, a lot of customers are used to, or customers can use um, a, a click of a button to upgrade. Um, and then I'll show you that in a second, how, how easy that is. Um, and then, um, and then lastly, you have all the automation tools to make uh, everything uh, much easier to manage, right? So, okay. Now, I've gone through the manage application. Now I'm gonna show you how to redirect traffic to Checkpoint. So to redirect traffic to Checkpoint, what you do is that you go into the hub, and then you go into hub two. And then on the left here, right, third party providers, you click on uh, NBA. And here you have the uh, installation detail of the gateway. So click here, CloudGuard NBA, and you have the firewall information here. Okay. Now, how do you redirect traffic to the checkpoint? So, so there are two. So the new feature is called the routing intent and routing policies. So in here is where you specify uh, where to send the internet traffic. So you have the option, obviously, the Azure Firewall and, uh, and the Network Virtual Appliance. So here is the CloudGuard gateways that I've already deployed, um, already onboarded to SharePoint. So in terms of the upgrade process, right, I mentioned before, um, this is RAD120 is our, uh, our, is our uh, version that we're about to release. This is a new version. So what customer can do uh, when it comes to upgrade is that they can deploy a brand new version side by side. And when you're ready during a, a change window and during downtime, you can simply select the checkpoint, another a new, a new uh, checkpoint cluster here, and then click on save. It takes about anywhere from three to 15 minutes to redirect all the internet traffic to the new checkpoint cluster. Now, if you come across any problem with the new version, you can always simply go back um, and select the old one here. Um, here, the second part is the private traffic. And this is where you would specify um, where to send the all the um, non-routable IP addresses, all the RFC 1918 addresses here. Um, you would select the, obviously select the checkpoint, right? So you can have uh, two different clusters. So you have one cluster handling your internet bound traffic, and you can uh, have another cluster to handle your east-west traffic here. 
All right, again, I'm gonna pause here to see if there are any questions from the audience. So what is the benefit of separating ingress traffic firewall in a separate VNet, separating concerning north-south versus east-west? So that's a great question. Um, so the reason we're separating ingress and the east-west traffic here in the single hub design and you know, also in the ST-WAN design here is that um, currently we're we're working with Microsoft to have the external load balancer be able to deploy inside the hub. Um, so um, so what customers have used to use the external load balancers for ingress connectivity, right? Um, so and unfortunately, that feature is not currently available inside the hub yet. So, you know, we target, we hope to have it available um, by first half of next year, where we're going to have the external load balancer be available inside the hub. So you can, um, you know, I think by sometime next year, you'll be able to eliminate this cluster here and have um, all the traffic uh, being able to deploy in a single hub here. So that's why you know we have a separate cluster here for ingress. Um, same goes for SD WAN as well. So um, we're we're we have, we're working with uh, Microsoft to have um, the SD WAN appliances to be um, to be able to the um, uh, service chain inside the a single hub. So we can also collapse the the second hub here into a single hub design here. Um, while on the topic of roadmap, we also have um, a plan of rolling out our own SD-WAN capabilities as well. So soon we also have be able to provide SD-WAN capabilities, um, you know, directly in uh, directly in our um, security gateway as well here. Okay, so I'm going to move on to the automation here. So now that we have the Cloud Ground Network security gateways. Uh, um, install right and traffic redirected to checkpoint. The first thing our customers will do is to uh, you know implement the firewall rules, right? Um, so we fully su we support infrastructure as code. So we have our own management API that our customers can use. Uh, we also support uh, Ansible, Terraform, and uh, and Logic apps as well to to help customers automate their uh, firewall rule changes into CloudGuard. Um, but with the infrastructure as code is great for deploying new resources. Um, but with dynamic policy, uh, is infrastructure as code is great for deploying new resources. But when you have a scale out event, um, when you have resources that comes online and, and uh, needs to make connection right away to download its configuration file, infrastructure as code may not be fast enough to cater for that. So that's why we have something called dynamic policy. And I want to show you guys this capability because really a big, um, a huge time saver. So let me hop into the policy and show you what that looks like. Okay, so here we're looking at a uh, security policy for two different applications. Um, so I'm not very creative, I just call it application one and application two. Um, and this is a three tier application. We have web, app, and database, right? Same for application two as well, web, app, and database. Now, what, what is uh, so interesting about this particular uh, feature is that this is all based on tags, right? So this is, um, we're looking for tag value of application one, and with the value of app. And when I look at the query, we have two resources that we identify in Azure that has um, you know, uh, this tag value. And we also have the same capability across AWS, GCP, uh, VMware, um, Nutanix, um, um, uh, other VMware, vCenter, Open, uh, OpenStack, right? I don't have it all deployed here, but we have the ability to read tag values from other cloud providers as well, like public and private cloud providers. And what this will give our customer is that uh, customers can simply tag their assets, then we will apply the correct firewall rules for that particular asset. So this is super helpful. Um, and uh, it makes a you know rule management and we, when you have a scale out event where, where it takes a long time for infrastructure as code to commit the changes to the gateway, um, this, uh, update every 30 seconds. So within 30 seconds, your firewall rules will be updated across your entire fleet. So we have, um, so so that traffic will, will start working without you even logging into the uh, firewall management console to allow that access. Um, and then when, when you decommission the application, you simply select all the rules here and delete. 
and the application will no longer work, work across your environment. So this is a really nice feature. Um, next, I want to show you the um, we integrate with uh, Azure Active Directory to provide the um, our customers with uh, the zero trust implementation, right? So with zero trust, it's very important to identify the user, right? So in here, we have um, all the uh, sales department own, uh, users, right? And we're not actually uh, using IP addresses here, we're using users. So user will authenticate to uh, Azure AD. Once authenticated, then they can actually access all their uh, applications here. Um, we also support conditional access. So if the user is connecting, connecting to the application from their mobile device, we won't allow that unless they actually connect it from their corporate PC, for example. You can implement the conditional access that way. Um, another good use case for this, uh, for conditional access is for the, some of the legacy applications that does not support some of the modern authentication, right? Um, such as conditional access, right? Um, so we have the ability to protect the application by having the Cloud Guard Network Security uh, along the path here. Okay, so just notice we have three minutes left. Um, it's gonna show you the autonomous threat prevention capability. So now that we have a firewall rules uh, in place, right, allowing the applications to work, what about advanced threat prevention? So one of the biggest challenges that we can see is customers will have a really hard time implementing the advanced threat prevention capabilities. So we made it easy for our customer with the autonomous threat prevention capability. So you simply turn on, it's a one click, you turn it on on the gateway and you specify the policy here. Second. Sorry, my our internet's a bit slow here. Let's give it a second to load. Okay, so while I'm waiting for that to load, I wanna show you a, a quick demo of what kind of protection that you'll get. So, um, so this is a Windows server behind the Cloud Guard Network Security Gateway. Um, we have something called ctcheckme.com. Um, it's a tool that we provide for our customers to check the, uh, the network path. Are they, is this network path secure or not? Right, so as you can see here, without the Cloud Guard Network Security Gateway in place, you have, uh, you know, uh, the customer is susceptible for malware, zero day, uh, um, uh, and, data, uh, and data leakage here. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna refresh this page. Now that we have the Cloud Guard uh, protecting your VWAN installation, I'm gonna refresh it and show you what it looks like um, with Cloud Guard in place. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and select network. Okay. So go ahead and uh, check the network path. Okay, so while that is running, second. Okay. Choose trackers. Okay, verify. It's good. Okay, so now it's going. Okay, so going back to the um, autonomous uh, threat prevention policy. So we, we make it easy for customers by uh, categorizing the uh, threat prevention in different categories. So we can select data centers, perimeter firewall, and internal uh, network. The, the main thing here is we, we give you the best practices configuration. So you have that peace of mind that this configuration is the vendor recommendation um, based on the profile that you select. Um, that's one. Uh, that's one uh, feature. The other really good feature is the ability to um, keep your advanced threat prevention uh, features up to date. So we update these features in the background so that you know that, you know, back uh, so that you give you the assurance that these uh, um, uh, advanced threat prevention blades will, uh, will be always be up to date. Okay. So I'm just gonna wrap it up by going here, show you that now with Cloud Guard Network Security in, uh, um, uh, in the VWAN hub, all your traffic will be protected. So as you can see, um, you know, we'll protect you from malware, we'll protect you from command and control, Right, so you know the uh, you know going through the security session here, at Microsoft. Right, you have uh, two hours before the, the your malware can can start spreading uh, laterally. So, um, so with that, I think we're times up. So, um, yeah, thank you so much, everyone. Um, just have one last question: Is Cloud Guard available in Azure, China Cloud? Um, I don't have an update for you for China, but um, I will get your contact information. I will get back to you on that one. Okay, so. All right, thank you very much. Any other questions? Are we good? Okay. 
Okay, so, yeah. So one last question is about what is the advantage of using CloudGuard central management versus the Azure firewall? So with CloudGuard um, management, um, we have the ability to manage the CloudGuard um, uh, gateways across multi-cloud. So if you have um, AWS GCP presence as well, or even a, a hybrid where you have on-prem firewalls, so all that is managed centrally, um, whereas the Azure firewall uh, can only protect uh, resources within Azure. Okay, so with that, I'm going to end the session. Thank you so much for your time. And um, and uh, if you want to try out the solution, right, go ahead and scan this QR code here on the right hand side. Um, and we're currently running uh, the solution early availability. Uh, we'll be going GA with a solution uh, by November or, or December of this year. So sometime in Q4 um, with this solution, we'll go GA. Okay, so uh, one final. With the Azure Firewall Manager. Okay, yeah. So, okay, my my apologies. So, there was a question about what is the difference between this and the Azure Firewall Manager. So, the Azure Firewall Manager is what we used previously to integrate our Harmony Connect solution, um, and um, and where, whereas this solution we actually deploy directly into the hub um, with our uh, with our NVA. I hope that. Answer the question there. So, if not, um, you can always reach out to me. Uh, my email is uh, in the uh, is in the um, uh, waiting room. So, um, you know, feel free to reach out if you have any more follow up questions. Okay. So, with that, thank you everyone joining our session today.